days when the judges ruled, there was famine in the land. And so Elimelech, a father of Judah, leaves his home with his wife Naomi, and they set off to Moab, one of the traditional enemies of Israel, to find a place where they can live and find food. Elimelech dies, leaving two sons who marry Moabite women. And after 10 years with no children, they both die too. So leaving two young wives and Naomi to fend for themselves. And as is the case still in so many places, Naomi was in a vulnerable position with no one to care for her, no male to care for her, no male heir. And she heard that conditions were better in Bethlehem. The Lord had visited his people and given them food. And so she decides to go back, to turn back to Bethlehem. Bethlehem, a Hebrew word, means house of bread. But you, O Bethlehem, who are little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth from me the one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. It's a quote from Micah. And when I read that, it reminds me that God's hand was on this right from the beginning. Right from the beginning. Naomi urges her two daughters-in-law to turn back to their families and she adds to their gods. They must make a decision. And reading that, I was reminded of a poem that you may be familiar with by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down, one as far as I could, to where it bent in the undergrowth, then took the other, as just, as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted I would ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Opa and Ruth had a decision to make. Would they follow Naomi? Orpah decides to go back, the familiar path, back to her family, but Ruth will not go back. Instead, she decides to take her chances with Naomi in a foreign land with a little or an unknown God. And those memorable, beautiful words, do not press me to leave you or turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Ruth makes a promise to Naomi. She also takes a a step of faith, calling on God of Israel. Whether she knows him or not, we cannot be sure. But in that moment, she makes a decision. She takes the unknown path, and that makes all the difference. When Naomi and Ruth arrive in Bethlehem, the whole town is agog. Who is this Moabite woman? And look at Naomi. They can hardly recognize her. Is this Naomi, they ask? It's not easy returning home with nothing. They had left, seeking a better life, but others had stayed. And coming home isn't always as one remembers. People change with time and circumstances, but memories linger. You see that today I'm wearing a, a poppy a remember of, of Remembrance Day on uh, uh, this week, as you remember Veterans Day, remembering those who gave their lives in World War I and World War II. And I was listening to a program last week about uh, British soldiers in World War I coming back for a very short leave from, from France. Often they were told with no notice at all, just literally leaving the trenches and coming home. And they'd come home covered in the mud from the trenches. And apparently some people who saw them didn't really believe it, thought perhaps they were putting it on a bit. They were skeptical. And when they came home, they found out that their friends, they were all off fighting, they went there. And for those who had stayed, those who knew them, maybe those who asked, they couldn't find the words to adequately describe what the situation was. 
One person said that for him, reality was no longer home in England's green and pleasant land, but was in the trenches in France. Things had changed, and they had changed. And I imagine those of you who particularly have been in military service can maybe identify with that with a little bit. Where is home now? Is it the same as when you left? Painfully aware of her changed circumstances, Naomi protests, don't call me Naomi, which means pleasant, but Mara, which means bitter. For the Lord has dealt bitter with, bitterly with me. I went away full and the Lord has sent me back empty. Which we may wonder about because a little later in the story, if you read it, you'll find that she actually has this little plot of land, but perhaps she's not able to access it. But bitter is how she's feeling. Homecoming is bitter, and her prospects don't seem to be much better than when she was away. She had left to go to a foreign land. When I was in my early 20s, my parents left to go to a foreign land. Well, Canada, it's not that foreign. <laughs> and they left my, my sister and I in England, and I remember that feeling that there would no longer be a family home that it was gone, and even though I followed them out to Canada a couple of years later, it, it just wasn't the same, and especially when my, my father died and my mother moved in with my uh, sister. The, there wasn't that family home. Now I was a mother, and I had to create a home, a family home. Frederick Beekner is a favorite of mine. He wrote a sermon called The Longing for Home, and he talks of home as the place where you feel you belong. He says, and I quote, to think about home eventually leads you to think back to your childhood home, the place where your life started, the place that off and on throughout your life you keep going back to, even if only in dreams and memories. And that is apt to determine the kind of place, perhaps a place inside yourself, that you spend the rest of your life searching for, even if you are not aware that you are searching. The longing for home is so universal, he says, that we have a word for it, homesickness. Perhaps as well as economic necessity, Naomi had homesickness. She desired to be with a community that she knew and that worshipped God. But now she's back in that community, things have changed, and she must, feel, she must find a deal, the practical things to deal with though the reader will see how the hand of God is on this all the way through. And I think what stands out for me when I read this book is realizing that, that we may not be aware of it, but the, the little decisions that we make, the paths we decide to take, God's hand is on that, in the warp and the weft of his kingdom. Naomi understands very well that what is needed here is a husband, she understands that there's no male to care for the family. She doesn't think she can marry and have children, but Ruth can. So she sets, that is, Naomi sets her sight on a kinsman, an upright kinsman called Boaz. And when Ruth goes out into the fields to collect the leftover grain that's, that's left for people who have little or nothing, Boaz notices this young woman. And he commends her on her faithfulness and seeking refuge under the, the wing of God. And if you read the King's James Version, when we get to the uh, threshing floor, which we skipped over in the reading this morning, Ruth will say to Boaz, take your maidservant under your wing. He is, can be considered the redeemer. He doesn't have to marry her, but decides that he will. That incident on the threshing floor, as you might imagine, has raised some eyebrows. Was Naomi putting Ruth at risk? Was she manipulative? What really happened that night? I think most of us like a little bit of drama and intrigue in our book, do we not? And I have a feeling that maybe the writer knew that. There is some ambigu ambiguity in the Hebrew word used. But there is nothing to suggest that there was any impropriety that night. Unusual, perhaps, yes. But we know that Boaz is an upstanding and righteous man, fearing God, and that he respects Ruth, who he described as a woman of worth. He understands that Ruth is saying she wants to be married, and he agrees to that. 
And I wondered too if maybe he was a little more sensitive than, than some would be toward this Moabite woman. For consider for a moment who was his mother. His mother was, if you read the genealogy in the beginning of Matthew, was Rahab, a non-Israelite and a former prostitute. Her story is told in Joshua. Don't you think that's amazing? I find this incredibly hopeful that if God can use all these weird and wonderful people, then surely he can use us too, even me. And most of the time we don't realize that those decisions that we make, we may fret about, oh, I don't know which way God wants me to do, I don't know what God wants to do with my, I'm not sure what I should do. Take a step of faith, commit our lives to him, and he will use it. He will use it. Boaz sees that Ruth has taken a courageous step in coming to Bethlehem and now is willing to take the man that Naomi chooses. He said, you could have had a younger man. But she's made a promise. She's promised to be with Naomi till death do they part, essentially. Where you go, I'll go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. She's chosen a path and made a decision. And in her small act of faithfulness and kindness, God has worked in a most extraordinary way that this young Moabite woman will be the great-grandmother of King David. What God asks of us is to be faithful, righteous, loving God and our neighbor, caring for the vulnerable, the widow, the child, a cup of water to the thirsty, shelter for the refugee. The story of Ruth begins with two people, two refugees looking for a better life, it didn't work out as they had hoped it would. And Naomi's longing for home. And taking a step and turning around, God turned her bit bitterness into joy. In Beekner's sermon I mentioned earlier, he recounts an in incident on the church steps where one person says, are you going home for Christmas? And what he meant by that, the implication was, were you headed for the manger? to kneel at the foot of Christ with the shepherds and the oxen. Ultimately says Bika, the, the, Bikna, the road, the home that we long for and belong to is where Christ is. He concludes, I believe that home is Christ's kingdom, which exists both within us and among us as we wend our prodigal ways through the world in search of it. And we respond to God's call on our lives. However that comes, we make a decision. And we step out, not knowing where that may lead. We step out with him, and knowing that one day we will be face to face. For Naomi, and for Ruth, and for you, and for me, the words from Ephesians stood out for me this week. You are no longer strangers and sojourners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. And knowing that makes all the difference. Amen. I invite you to stand in faith across as we declare our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven. 